Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and it's the last video of 2015. 2015 is in the books, and it turned out to be a really great year, both for this channel and for me personally. It didn't start out as a great year, but it ended up being one of the best years ever, and 2016 has the potential to be even better. I asked you to ask me questions, and I have them right here. I'm going to go through these. Uh, if I missed your question, I apologize. Uh, but I think I do have everyone's question here, so let's get started. MG Villain says, I want to know two things. Uh, the, toy, uh, the Joe toy you favor above all others and the one you absolutely dislike and you would avoid. Uh, well, as you probably know, Stalker is my favorite G.I. Joe character, and I do highly value that toy. But right now, the one I probably favor above all others is uh, Steel Brigade version 1E because that one was just so hard for me to find. It seemed like I was searching for it forever, and I was ecstatic when I actually got the thing. So right now, that one would probably be at the top of the list. Uh, and the one that I uh, dislike and I, I would avoid, um, that's actually probably Steel Brigade version 2, the Gold Head Steel Brigade. Um, now, I'll eventually get it and review it because I want to review everything for the, from the Vintage line. But I don't really like the look of that figure. Uh, it's, not, I, I, it's not a good action figure to me. I, I don't like the way they change the colors around. Uh, and they're pretty expensive. So I'm not really looking forward to spending a lot of money on a figure that I don't really like. So that one has a pretty low priority. Joe Eversoll asks, uh, Do you know anything about the Mego 3 and 3 quarter figures like Buck Rogers from the late 70s that had an articulated O-ring design practically identical to the 80s uh, Hasbro G.I. Joes? Uh, a little bit. I had some as a kid. I think I had some Dukes of Hazard, and I think there were MASH action figures too. I'm not sure if that was Mego, but they, I, I'm pretty sure they also had sort of an O-ring design. Um, so yeah, I am somewhat familiar with them. Um, at some point, maybe um, if I wanted to do like a history of the three and three quarter inch action figure, uh, I might get some of those. I think that would be an interesting video. Um, but I don't have any of them right now, and so I don't really incorporate that history into my reviews. But uh, that is an interesting uh, uh, kind of part of the history of uh, what made up G.I. Joe. Uh, Alamo Patriot says uh, uh, two questions. First, uh, do you have a favorite childhood memory associated with finding that one G.I. Joe that you had wanted for a while? Uh, the answer to that one is uh, yes, and it's actually probably the Duke action figure. When I found that on the, the shelves uh, as a carded figure, um, I was you know really excited about that because it had previously been available only as a mail-away, uh, and I didn't mail away for, for him, and so I wasn't sure I would ever actually get to own a Duke action figure. But when it actually came out, it was in the stores, and I was able to get it. I, I was, you know, pretty excited about that. Even though, you know, Duke is not my favorite character, I was just particularly excited about getting that figure. Uh, second question was, um, do you still have a few of your original favorite G.I. Joes? Uh, in your current collection. No, I do not. Um, I don't have any of my original cl collection uh, left right now. Um, I, everything that I have right now I've gotten as an adult collector and it, I, I regret that. I regret letting go uh, of my old childhood toys. Uh, Kerouac uh, says, um, do you have any memories of getting certain shows on Christmas uh, or for your birthday? Uh, and what is your favorite year for the Joe Squad? Um, the first question, I do remember, I think it was Christmas, I'm pretty sure it was Christmas, when I got the 1983 Headquarters Command Center, uh, and that was a big deal, and we got a lot of play out of that playset. We used that a lot. In fact, my mom had this idea that we tried out. Um, we got some glow-in-the-dark paint, and we painted the inside of the spotlights, so when we turned the lights out, uh, the spotlights would glow. We thought that was kind of fun. Um, so yeah, the 83 headquarters, um, and let's uh, see, what's your favorite year for the Joe Squad? Uh, probably 1984. Uh, 1984 is a great year, especially for Cobra, a great year for, for villains. Um, but uh, 1985 is a really close second. I mean, 1985 is a great year too. It's really hard to choo choose between those two. But um, I think 1984 just barely edges it out. I think because of some of the really sweet um, 
uh, uh, realistic military figures like Ripcord. I really like Ripcord. I got a lot of use out of that figure. Um, and, and just great villains. Uh, Zartan, you know, Wild Weasel in the, in the Cobra Rattler, um, uh, the, the first Cobra uh, boat, uh, the Water Moccasin. Uh, it was a great year. A uh, great year for Cobra and a, and a good year for G.I. Joe 2. But honorable mention for 1985. Really also a really great year. Uh, War Machine Vengeance. Uh, what's your favorite kind of beef jerky? Mine's teriyaki. Get it? I'm such a stinker. See, I said I wasn't going to answer any jerky questions, so I'm not. I don't have to answer that one. Uh, but teriyaki is pretty good. Uh, James Strickland um, says, uh, "Have you ever made your own special Joe team or Cobra team? Um, and will you ever do the Mission Brazil team?" Um, uh, okay, two questions. First uh, is, uh, did I ever? make my own special G.I. Joe team. Yes, as a kid we did sort of make our own special squad of Joes um, and it was called the Wolverines and it was named after the group of kids in the movie Red Dawn. Remember that 80's movie? Well, so we kind of borrowed from that. Um, and then towards the end of our collecting, when we were starting to get older and we weren't getting as much G.I. Joes, and then of course the G.I. Joe figures started to get kind of weird with a bunch of crazy colors and stuff like that. Uh, that's when we kind of uh, started um, doing a little bit of customizing. So, I mean, if they were going to give us a purple action figure or something like that, well, we just painted green and we switched the parts around and we kind of make our own guys and then that, though they would be part of our Wolverine squad, a kind of like a guerrilla, uh, guerrilla warfare squad or something like that. Um, let's see, what was the other one? Um, ever do the mission to Brazil team? Yes, I will eventually. I don't have it yet, but that I do consider to be part of the vintage toy line. So yeah, that at some point will need to be reviewed. Uh, let's see, Ben uh, Pens. Penserga, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your, your name, uh, but Ben uh, asks, um, I'm going to ask Sue, um, what got you into YouTube and what's your camera uh, editing setup? Uh, what got me into YouTube, um, I actually had an old channel uh, in which I did video blogs about uh, law and philosophy and uh, political science. Um, and that was kind of fun for a while, but I got out of it, especially when I went to law school. I just didn't have time to keep up with it. And I didn't feel like picking it up again uh, when I got out of law school. Um, but I felt like I wanted to do something on YouTube. I, I really like that the format and that forum. Uh, and so when I started collecting G.I. Joe, I, I, w I wanted to find something to do on YouTube, and it kind of led to this. As for my camera and editing setup, the camera is a Samsung HD camera. It's really not an expensive camera at all. Uh, and my editing software is a Sony um, Movie Editor uh, 13. Uh, uh, it's like Sony Vegas Pro 13, I think that's what it's called. Uh, and I've had that for a while. I, I upgraded last year uh, to the most recent version, and that's worked pretty well for me. Part of the problem that I had with some of my older videos is that I was using an old version that was starting to not be compatible with anything anymore, um, and it just it just wasn't working. But since I've upgraded, uh, I think the editing has been a little bit better. Uh, okay, uh, John Bird. Uh, as says, uh, will you be reviewing any of the Sergeant Savage Screaming Eagle figures or vehicles from that line? I don't think so. I don't really consider that to be a part of the vintage line. If I ever do it, I'll kind of maybe do it as a side thing, uh, but I haven't really thought about it, and it's not immediately in the works, so I don't think so. Big Tragic One says, can I have a Steel Brigade figure? Yes! Yes, you absolutely can! Just go to eBay and buy one. The Skull Reviews says, uh, do you collect anything outside of G.I. Joe? Well, I did. I kind of dabbled in Star Wars a little bit, uh, but I've kind of gotten out of that. Uh, right now, it's uh, just G.I. Joe. I'm really trying to limit my uh, the scope of my collecting to vintage American release uh, G.I. Joe, because I don't want the collecting to get out of hand. I want it to be fun. Um, I don't want it to be an obsession, at least not too much. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to keep it limited to that. Now at some point I may branch out into other things, but that's it for right now. Oh, except I do have, I did, I did, I did get this He-Man at a, a flea market for 50 cents just because I never had one. Uh, let's see, um, 
A Foster 79 says, uh, what's your favorite Cobra figure and Cobra vehicle? Uh, the Cobra figure, that's hard to choose. Um, it might be Zartan. Uh, it might be Storm Shadow. Um, but that's hard to choose because there are a lot of really cool Cobra figures. Um, I almost feel bad about leaving out some version of Cobra Commander, but Zartan and Storm Shadow, the, the really great figures. They're, they're original 1984 figures. Really good. That's one of the reasons why 1984 is such a good year. Uh, and uh, favorite Cobra vehicle would have to be the His Tank. I just think that's a nice design. Um, you know, it just, it, it, I, I really like that design. And I, and I like that it's black. Um, that just to me is the embodiment of a Cobra vehicle. That's just what a Cobra vehicle should be. Uh, let's see, Comic Book Nostalgia says, are you a lawyer? Le yes, I am. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later in this video. Kyriakos Vapiatis asks, is Major Blood equal to a Cobra officer? Well, according to their file cards, yes, they are equal. But I think that the way the, uh, that Major Blood was used in really both the comic book and the cartoon, uh, he was definitely higher up in the command structure, so rank in the Cobra organization, uh, I'm not sure exactly how that works, but I do think Major Blood should outrank your garden variety Cobra officer. Let's see, uh, Red Vitamin Blue. Two questions. First one, um, in an alternate universe, what vintage Joe member and or vehicle do you think would have made a better Cobra agent slash asset and vice versa? Uh, uh, vice versa. As my college uh, philosophy professor used to request from his students, uh, expand and explain. And two, will we get any more comic reviews in 2016? Okay, the first one. Uh, a Joe character or vehicle, I'm gonna stick with a character that uh, would have worked, um, uh, uh, maybe made a better Cobra agent. I'm gonna say Snake Eyes. I think Snake Eyes, if he had just gone left instead of right one day, uh, would have been a pretty amazing villain, a great villain. Um, and so, as a Cobra asset, um, that really would have been uh, something. You could have done a lot with uh, Snake Eyes in Cobra. That would have been really interesting to see. Um, and as far as a Cobra uh, agent or asset that would be better as a Joe, maybe Destro, because Destro did kind of have a sense of honor. Um, and uh, half of the time he was trying to undermine Cobra. Uh, so. Um, you know, and he's worked with uh, G.I. Joe before, so I think that he's someone that, uh, that that Joes could work with at least. And, you know, you can't get much better as, uh, as a strategist um, and as a fighter. You know, Destro. Destro would be, make an interesting Joe. Uh, your second question, any more comic reviews in 2016? I will try. And here's, I have to apologize specifically to Mark Sardoni, who has been good enough to scan comic book pages so that I can do the reviews. And I, I've still stalled out. Um, and it's mainly because of the editing. It takes longer to edit a comic book review than it does to edit just a, 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 a video review, uh, like a toy review. Uh, so. It's just something that it, it's hard to fit in my schedule and also get the other stuff done that I want to do. But I really want to, and I'm really going to try to, I want the comic book reviews to be part of this channel. It's just, it's just tough finding the time to do it. Uh, Roadbuster Reviews, uh, what is your least favorite G.I. Joe character, uh, not figure, but character? I'm going to say um, uh, Golobulus from Cobra Law is just... I mean, that's like the worst of the worst. I mean, not just the figure, but in the movie, the way that he's portrayed with like the like the crab shells on his body and the like he's in this like globe thing, and then he has a snake tail. Um, I think he would have made a fine uh, villain for He-Man if you put him in Masters of the Universe, but just the worst for G.I. Joe. I just it it tears me apart just seeing him on screen. Fragminion says, do you follow any of the current comic book runs of the Joes? No, I don't right now. Um, I'd like to eventually, but I haven't even gotten all the way through the original Marvel Comics run yet, and I want to get all of that before I look at anything new. So eventually I will, but I haven't yet. Uh, Jack uh, Mayoffer says, uh, was your likeness used for the 1983 Airborne figure? Yes. In 1983, I was eight years old, and I looked exactly like Airborne.
Not really. The Volition Society says, how would you pitch code name Snowjob to the boss? Um, I would have the secretary do it. Matt in 69 v 3 says, what's your favorite episode of the old 80s cartoon? That's hard to choose, and oftentimes I rag on the cartoon. I definitely prefer the comic book over the, the cartoon by a wide margin, but there were some ex episodes that I enjoyed. The ones that I can think of, um, The World's Without End, uh, two-parter, uh, I thought was pretty good, even though it had a lot of science fiction and fantasy stuff. Uh, I just thought it, the story was told in a very good way that was very dramatic, and I did enjoy that. Um, the episode, uh, The Viper is Coming, um, it's a quirky episode, but I kind of liked it. Not everybody liked it, and I understand that, but I, I enjoyed it. Um, and then uh, the first episode uh, of the original miniseries, A Real American Hero, I remember being very excited about seeing that. That first episode, the first time I saw uh, G.I. Joe in a 30-minute a animated cartoon. Very excited. And, I, of course, I thought it... I had no idea what would become of the cartoon, that it would sometimes be get as weird as it did. At the time, I was just very hopeful. I, I, I was seeing my favorite G.I. Joe characters in animated form. Uh, and I did kind of wonder if they were always going to shoot lasers. Are they never going to have, you know, real guns? But, you know, that, it was a good start. I was happy to see them on TV. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mr. T.J. Bang. Um, any relation to T.J. Hooker? Um, Mr. T.J. Bang says, uh, which member of Ninja Force, other than Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow, is your favorite and why? Uh, I thought Scarlet was an unexpected but welcome addition, but it's pretty obvious uh, who I'm a fan of. Um, uh, I think Scarlet, I, if I had to choose. And I'm not, again, I'm not a big fan of Ninja Force. Um, I think that G.I. Joe went a little bit ninja crazy in that era. Uh, but if I had to choose, um, uh, like, a, a favorite other than Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow, yeah, Scarlet. Although the figure... The, the Ninja Force Scarlet figure is a little weird, but I like the character of Scarlet, and so um, I think she would fit in that, you know, team. So, yeah, Scarlet. Uh, let's see. Uh, Project Dark Corp has a whole bunch of questions. Let's start at the beginning. Uh, number one. Uh, among all your reviews, what was the hardest toy to review uh, you've done and why? It was the Cobra Night Raven. That was the hardest to review. For one thing, it was a vehicle and a figure that makes it longer. There's more to do. There's more to research. Um, it was a long video. Uh, I, my voice wa was hoarse by the time I was done. and there, I made a lot of mistakes in it. I had to do a lot of takes. Uh, that one almost killed me. That one was really tough. Uh, number two, uh, how do you feel about the newer G.I. Joe toys that came out? Um, like the modern era toys. I mean, I have a few, but they're not my thing. I don't really have any connection to the modern toys. I don't really see them as an extension of the vintage toys. Um, I'm a vintage collector, and that's that's pretty much it. Um, I mean, they look nice. They look really good. I mean, the sculpting is pretty cool. The, the accessories are really cool, but... Um, there's just not that, uh, that kind of emotional connection to them that I have with the vintage toys. Uh, let's see, three. Uh, what is the total number of your entire G.I. Joe collection by way of release? Uh, what Joe's Cobra toys are you uh, still missing from your collection by way of release? Of course. Uh, I don't think I can break it down quite that much. Um, most of my collection is actually right here behind me. I have a few things here and there and a few things, you know, in some boxes. But for the most part, what you see is what I have. Um, and I do have a list uh, of what I have and what I don't have, but um, uh, I have most of 1983, th or, I'm sorry, 1982 through 1985 ish, uh, but I'm still missing a few things from each year. Um, after 1985, when you start getting into 1986, I don't have nearly as much stuff. I have still have quite a bit of work to do there. Um, that's kind of how it breaks down, though. I, I still have quite a few gaps, and I'm still a relatively new collector. There's a lot that I don't have. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, for what is the future plans for your show? Like, uh, if you manage to review all the Joes, uh, uh, or uh, what other goodies are you planning to do for 2016? Okay. 
Um, I want to improve the look of the show. I want to improve the production value of the show, and I just want to make the videos more interesting and more fun. Uh, what if I reviewed all of the Vintage Joe stuff? Like, I'm done. I'm nothing else to do. Uh, I'd like to do the, the comic books. I'd like to do all the comic books. Maybe do all, after that, do all of the, the cartoon episodes. Uh, just cover everything that has to do with Vintage G.I. Joe. I, I mean, that's my passion. That's what I want to do. Maybe if all of that's done um, and I just don't have anything else to do for Vintage G.I. Joe, you know, maybe I'll look at something else that's not G.I. Joe, but that's so far into the future that I don't really have to think about it right now. Uh, Del Noir uh, says, what's your day job? Okay, this relates to the earlier question. Uh, I am a lawyer. Um, I work for the public defender's office in the county in which I live. Um, I specifically work uh, in the civil division, uh, in the mental health division, uh, doing uh, cases involving uh, civil mental health commitments. So I represent people who have mental illnesses and, and who um, are being committed to hospitals because of their mental illnesses. And I make sure their rights are protected and I make sure that uh, they're represented. And that's what I do. I love the job. It's a great job. I, I really enjoy it. Uh, but I do uh, see a lot of very mentally ill people pretty much every day. That's what I do. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sonic360 says... What vehicle would you have Hasbro update and release for the Modern Joe figures? Uh, as I said, I don't really collect Modern G.I. Joe, even though I do have a few. I don't consider myself a, to be a collector of them. Um, but, I don't know, I'm not really even sure what, what vehicles they have done. So, maybe the Killer Whale, it'd be interesting to see that updated. Um, it's big. Uh, I might even buy it if it were out on the shelves, maybe. But, I don't know, that's the only thing I can think of. Other than that, I'm not sure what they've done and what they haven't done up to this point for, for modern. Uh, let's see. Silent Wubby says, uh, I kind of have two, cra uh, two or three wrapped in one. Okay. Uh, what made you want to start reviewing G.I. Joe figures on YouTube? Uh, and you plan on reviewing almost everything that Hasbro had to offer uh, in the original ARH uh, uh, Ara line. Uh, also, what is your favorite vintage Cobra Troop Builder, and how many do you plan on obtaining? Okay, that was four. Sorry, LOL. XD. Uh, okay, um, let's start at the let's start at the end and work our way back to the beginning. Uh, let's see. Uh, favorite vintage Cobra Troop Builder, and how many do I plan on obtaining? I still really like the old blue shirts. The the original 1982 Cobra Trooper, still I just love seeing a whole bunch of them. That to me is what Cobra looks like. A whole bunch of guys in blue shirts with guns and black masks. I love them. Great army builder. But a close second place would probably be the Snow, Ser Snow Serpent. I really like the look of the Snow Serpent. Really cool action figure. And a whole bunch of them to the get together looks pretty awesome. As far as how many that I would obtain, I really only need one complete example of each one. A after that, you know, if I pick up one here and there in a, a lot of other figures, that's fine. But I'm not going to go out and intentionally acquire a whole bunch of them. You know, I really, for especially re for review purposes, I really just need one that's complete with the file card. Uh, okay, other questions. Uh, do I plan on reviewing almost everything uh, that Hasbro had to offer in the original line? Yes, that's the plan. I want to eventually, over the long term, review every G.I. Joe toy. Every vintage, uh, real American hero G.I. Joe toy. All of them. That's the goal. Um, you know, one week at a time. We'll get it done. Uh, and the first question is, what, may, uh, what made you want to start reviewing... Um, G.I. Joe figures on YouTube. Okay, my original plan for this channel was not to do figure reviews. That wasn't the plan. What I originally wanted to do was uh, little um, action scenes or skits, kind of like what I'm doing now with the little action scenes that I sometimes put uh, at the end during the credits of the video. Um, but That's what I wanted to do just for the whole channel. Uh, but I, instead of just doing little vignettes, I wanted to do a whole bunch of them that you could like 
put together, string together, and make like a, a whole movie with a story arc. And I had part of it written already. Um, and I actually got a little bit of it started. But I ended up not ultimately doing that for a couple of reasons. First, it's very time consuming to do the special effects to create the sets, to make it look at least decent and make people want to watch it. Um, it takes a long time. And then the other thing is um, I read uh, Justin Bell's di diorama stories on General's Joes and they're really good. I mean, they're really good. I mean, the, the sets that he builds are awesome. I mean, the storytelling and the, the stories and the characterization uh, I really enjoyed them a lot, and I realized that there is no way I would ever have the time in my day to commit to making anything even halfway as good as that. Even my best effort wouldn't even approach uh, the, the kind of quality work that were in those Dio stories. So I kind of gave up on that idea. Uh, and so looking for something else to do. I know there were other G.I. Joe reviewers out there and I think they're really good. I didn't think I would necessarily be as good as them, but I decided I was going to try my hand at that and see if I could, you know, do something different, you know, bring something a little different to the table. Not necessarily better, but just different. Maybe my own individual personality. Um, one idea that I had was that maybe I should, instead of going for more entertaining reviews, I should just try to uh, be very analytical um, and be very detailed and just get a lot of information and uh, just, just be more informative. And that I think is why my early reviews are so dry and so slow and sometimes so long because that's kind of what I was going for. I really wasn't trying to be entertaining in any way. But after a while, you know, it. I wanted to have more fun, so I decided to kind of, you know, enjoy doing the reviews more and kind of uh, try, try to make them better, try to make them more interesting and put a little bit more of my personality into them. And that's how sort of we got to where we are today.